Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I finally have a few minutes to chat with you guys. I've been super busy as always, but not just busy, but stressed out. <laughs> I will explain a little bit of that. But right now it is a Saturday afternoon and Skylar was here for three hours this morning to help me sort and pack the orders for my sale. So glad that I get her to help me like that because it's a big help. I still have a long way to go, but I will uh, do some after this video and tomorrow is Sunday. I can work on that all Sunday, get those out. Um, maybe Tuesday, Monday, I have an appointment. Another thing that's stressing me out. First of all, just the fact that I have an appointment stresses me because it's a morning appointment for this tooth issue that I've got going, which is actually bone loss. They said I don't need a root canal, but I still feel like there's something wrong with the actual tooth. I don't know. I don't know what it feels like to have um, um, receding bone. So I am going to a periodontist. I do not think I want to be involved in having a bone graft or anything like that. I'll, I'll learn what it's about, but you know, I'm thinking I want the tooth pulled, but the thing is, is I didn't have full x-rays. I want full x-rays because I want to see if this is going on anywhere else because that will determine what I do. I'm going to be really, really sad if I have some kind of disease that's going to make me lose my teeth. I mean, I'll just be like, what? So hoping for the best on that. That's on Monday. I'm sure I will keep you updated. And uh, so I'm, I might get the packages out on Tuesday. And what was I going to say? So that's stressful because it's a morning appointment. And the day that I booked that appointment, couldn't sleep that whole night. It was like about a week before my appointment. I already was losing sleep because I'm so worried when I have a morning appointment that I'm not going to sleep the night before and I'm going to be exhausted. I could have had an afternoon, but it was near the end of May, something like May 24. And I'm like, I can't wait. I said, so what do you have for morning? And she said, Monday. And I was like, I'll take it. So I'm going to go do that. So stressful. Uh, more stressed about the fact that I have to get up and I'm afraid that I won't sleep than I am the actual appointment. They're just going to be doing x-rays and, and talking to me, so nothing's going to be done that day. The other thing that had me extremely stressed, and I didn't talk about it anywhere because I was just like, uh, I didn't even want to think about it. My mother's ashes, it took me two weeks to get those. I just got them today. She died exactly two weeks ago today. And I went with, um, I had done some calls. I had made calls when we got here, when we were still with Derek. So that was in October of last fall because I had everything prepaid for my parents, but we had moved. And I was given all the wrong information from the funeral home in Sanford, Maine. Um, I did have the paperwork with me, but I just trusted that they knew what they were talking about. And they were explaining to me that it's an irrevocable trust. So I get none of that money because I was like, you know, I'm not going to be spending like what I was. I just need a direct cremation and a burial. We're not having a mass. We're not involving a funeral home, all that stuff. I, I may have a mass. I'm not saying there's not a mass. Um, you can like have a mass said even if you're not part of it, you know, or I might have something graveside. I don't know yet. But the thing is, is that... Uh, she had like I'm gonna say 2700 toward her services and they said oh well n yeah no uh, we you know you can't get a refund on any of that and they said that now the plot is uh, 600 to dig the hole 600 to dig the hole during the week a thousand on the weekend and they had only allotted way back 20 years ago a hundred dollars to dig the hole so they said it's gone up and this and that I was like yeah but I'm supposed to be locked in that's the whole reason we do it and they said yeah but even though you're locked in at a, at a hundred we have to pay a thousand so that's gonna take a bunch of your money and so I was just like I was so frustrated that I was like why why does everything have to always be difficult so that was back in um, November did I say October before November 
we got there November 1st was our first day at Derrick's. So that was in November. So then I dropped the ball on that. My mother was doing good. And then I started making calls when I really knew she was declining. And the funeral homes, even though it's just a direct cremation, can be anywhere from 13, 1400 to 4000 plus, just for the direct cremation. So I ended up going with uh, cremation that I would not have known about on my own. Three different hospice nurses told me about it. They all said that the people who use it really like it. And the chaplain for hospice also said that's, you know, that's a good way to go. So it's online. What it is is they have deals with all different funeral homes. They come pick up my mother. They bring her to a morgue here. And then the company comes and gets her and brings her to Jackson, Mississippi, which is a couple hours away. And that's where she uh, gets cremated. And then they send it back to me. All of this is under $1,000. And I thought, you know, we don't need more than that. I'm going to have to pay to have the hole dug. I'm going to, because now oh, I'll get back to that, that trust. I have to pay for the engraving. I have to pay for a mass if I want. All these things that I thought would be covered are, are no longer covered. So I have to pay out of pocket, but I will be getting some money. So this is how it worked with the, with the funeral home. After I was told the wrong info again, when I started making calls, let's say in uh, March, at the beginning of March, maybe. And uh, they, they still kept telling me I had an irrevocable trust, which means I could not get any of that money back. And then one day I'm talking to the guy and he goes, oh, your trust is revocable. He goes, I don't understand that. He says, I've never seen a revocable trust. So at this point, I pull out my paperwork because I'm like, these people don't know what they're talking about. The funeral home has since been sold since way back when I did all this. And um, I started doing research on revocable and revocable is, is fully refundable. And they were telling me that, well, yeah, so you do have like uh, $2,700 and stuff. So I started, uh, you know, using my brain <laughs> and I thought there's interest. And I called um, the bank that the trust was with once upon a time. And she said, no, nah, I don't think you get any of the interest. I don't know how people don't know things. It made no sense to me. So I read that trust over and over again and the way it was worded to me I was getting that interest back so I felt armed armed and educated and I talked to the funeral home and I said uh, I'm supposed to get everything in that trust and it was something like 4300 and he said uh, well yeah and then there's fees and this and I says, says nothing about fees all that stuff I want the full amount so supposedly I'm going to get that full amount it's probably in the mail. He said they sent a check, I don't know, a few days ago. So I need to go check that. So that was all a hassle, and it was very, very stressful. And while I was doing all that, I was at the same time trying to do my homework on funeral homes, and that was stressful. But then, the day my mother died, I didn't have anybody picked. So I told them, I said, look, you guys have all told me to go with these people, and so that's what I'm going to do. And they come and pick up my mother. They take off. The next day I realized, what did I just do? I, I don't have anything, anything at all telling me where my mother was even brought. I, I mean, at the time I knew nothing. So I was so mad at myself that I didn't do a better job at that. But I was just, so much was going on, you know. And so I get a call from somebody from that cremation place and... I thought he was in charge of everything, and after a week of getting nowhere with him, oh yeah, I'll get you the, the I'll send out the paperwork that I need, it comes, I come to find out that I need s signatures from my siblings, which is not an easy task, um, I have to let them know, they have to be on board with it, and it, it's just, it, ugh. So I finally got all the information that the guy needed, email, you know, and phone number and stuff, and then he's just dragging his feet, and I would ask him, you know, like, well, where is my mother now? Is she still, oh yeah, she's at, well, what's her name again? I was like, oh my God, who am I doing business with? So what I didn't know is this guy is just for paperwork. And what he should have said is, if you have any questions, call Hernando Funeral Home, talk to them. They're going to be able to help you with all that other stuff. 
but they didn't. I didn't find out stuff that made me feel better until yesterday. Just yesterday I started to feel better about all this. The day before, I was looking into ways to wherever my mother was, I wanted to collect her body and go with somebody else. This is how, how stressful it was. And I was so sad. I was like, why? Why does there have to be shit attached to this? Why can't it just go good? So the guy that I was talking with, he continued to be troublesome, not only in the way he spoke to me, but he wasn't doing his job right. Finally, my siblings all get the paperwork via text or whatever, the computer email, and my sister noticed that it was wrong. She calls me and she said, this says that I am the deceased's sister. They had everybody listed as a sibling to my mother, not as a child, an adult child. I have to get on the phone with Bozo. And he was like all agitated and blah, 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 blah. And it was a weekend and he's like, I'm just in the office now. You're lucky you even caught me. Lucky I caught him. I called him on his cell phone. I, I would think that he'd have that with him anywhere. And he said that uh, he would get the, uh, he looked, he said, yep, it was a mistake. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. And uh, he, I'm going to send the paperwork out. So now I have to hurry up and let my brothers and their wives know, the wives that were handling it, that if you signed that, you have to sign another one. A new one's coming your way. So it was just irritating. It was irritating all around. And... Finally, that paperwork was all in, and I'm still waiting for the word that my mother is cremated, and I kept finding out, no, 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 and then I find out, oh yeah, she was a few days ago. What the hell was going on? So I was so upset that I complained to someone. Oh, I, I called the company to say, I want to talk to somebody who knows what's going on. Nobody ever called me back. But then I talked to hospice. The hospice social worker called me and uh, to see how I was and stuff. And I explained to her the trouble I was having. She got right on the phone with the head person of this cremation company. And that woman called me back and she eased my mind. Uh, I don't know if it's 100% true, but she eased my mind and told me that First, do not worry about the body. She says, we are in charge of that. And she explained all the procedures they go through so that they cannot make a mistake. We know that can happen. We know it can happen. But I felt better that it wasn't the guy that was handling all that because that's what had me ready to call somebody else and say, please help me. I need to rescue my mother. <laughs> I want her away from these people. But all was good in the end, except for now, Wednesday, I got a call from that guy, and he said, your mother is going to be uh, delivered to you tomorrow, so stay home. So that's a Thursday. And I stay home, because I have to sign, and I wait, wait, and wait, and then that afternoon he calls to tell me that, no, she wasn't being shipped out until that Thursday. So he said, now she's going to be coming on Friday. So that was yesterday. I waited all day. I have a tracking number, and she's supposed to arrive by 6 p.m. 8 p.m., nothing. Nothing has changed on the tracking. I went to bed and said, I hope she comes on Saturday because Monday I have a morning appointment. Derek is busy on Mondays. He can't come here and wait for a package for me. So I said the worst thing that's going to happen is that they're going to have to bring her back to the post office and I'll have to go pick her up there, which probably would be on Tuesday because she'll be riding around in the mail truck. So this this morning I was like please please have her arrive and Skylar came and I was just so worried about that that I was even like I was half thinking about what I was doing for my packages and worried that I was going to be making mistakes and when I'm stressed I will weigh something repeatedly because I'm sure that I got it wrong I have OCD in that way when I'm stressed numbers are an issue for me and I can weigh it and say okay it's seven and a half, so I have to round up to eight. Eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces. I write down on the paper, eight ounces. And as soon as I write that down, I am convinced that I either saw it wrong or I said it wrong, and I have to weigh it again. And then I have to weigh it again. 
and uh, I'm sure that drives Skylar crazy, <laughs> you know, and I told her, I said, if you tell me, I said eight ounces, I'm going to go by what you said, so, because I, I didn't want to keep doing that. It makes me sick. I've even gone to the post office and come home with packages because I was convinced everything was wrong, and I had to open some packages to say, okay, no, this was right. Uh. So that's why... Um, I don't like to be stressed out, and I was very stressed out. I mean, stressed to the max. Um, worrying about my mother, but she arrived while Skyla was here. I was so glad Skyla was here for that. And uh, we made sure we checked everything, that the names were right, the tag number was right. With uh, So, she's here. And I'm going to... Um, the plan was... Well, it wasn't the plan, but I had asked my sister if she would mind that... I wanted the ashes sent to me because I want some, because I have some of my father, so I thought I'd want some of hers. I did not want my sister to have to handle that and get me ashes and somehow get them to me. So I said, I will get the ashes, and then I can send them. And yes, I know you have to send them a certain way. You, it's USPS only, by law, and a certain package and labels and all these things, so it doesn't get lost. Um... But anyway, I still don't know why it was so delayed, but it was, and but that's okay. It's over. Uh, she's here. And so um, I asked my sister, if I were to send the ashes to you, uh, would you be willing to watch them when they dig the hole at the cemetery? I have to set all that up to make sure that that goes in that hole. She said, yes, I will do that. She says, I'll, I'll have my sons with me, and uh, we can do that. And then I said, or after I re you know, get to rest a little bit, maybe I would like to come this summer, and then we can do that. So I talked to Skylar about it. I haven't talked to Derek about it yet. I have a feeling Derek will say no, but that's okay. But uh, I may, I may go there, and I thought, oh, we don't have to wait too long because Skylar gets out of school in May, but no, her cousins won't get out until June. So I would want to wait until the kids are out of school and, uh, and maybe go and try to get a little place at the beach, a little place. No, I, I know that would be really expensive, and I, I think I would just rather get a hotel somewhere at the beach and I've already talked to my sister about that if that doesn't work we certainly can stay at my sister's so um, I'm thinking about doing that and uh, I still had another stressful story about health insurance because <laughs> I picked the wrong guy for that too a broker to help me to decide that will have to be for another time because I need to get some stuff done and I have a lot of editing now that I'm gonna have to do for this video but I just wanted to let you guys know that my mother's ashes are here. They're in her dresser, her dresser that she loved so much and that I love so much. So she's there. She's just waiting now for a trip to Maine. I would love to be the one to be able to bring her ashes there and to be there to see her buried and uh, with my father. And, um, and then that will be the final chapter of all that. So, um, oh yeah, and then I do have to find out if I got the trust money. So after this video, I'll go take a walk to the mailbox and see if that came yet. Sometimes I'd just rather not, not during a weekend, because then I can't call anybody about it. So I might wait until Monday. I might just, like, pretend the money is there. And um, it's just, uh, yeah, I just don't, I just don't like it when things go wrong. It was just very unfortunate that that I had to go through that with the, the funeral parlor uh, people, the ones in Maine, and the ones here. It was like I was juggling things on both ends. All right, you guys, I'm going to hang up now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with more soon. Bye.